Good afternoon. And just checking the screen. Yes, we are live. Okay. <laughs> um, welcome to episode 733 of what you're asking. I'll tell you that in a moment. And the topic today is when is enough enough? When we stop doing the same thing, and I'll explain that in more detail, and you may already guess where I'm going, but in case you don't, I'll let you know where I'm going in a minute. Before I jump into that, let, you, let me choose myself so you know who I am and why I do this. So hi, my name is Barry Selby, in case you haven't seen me before, and I am a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. I do these talks every day now for... Um, well, I'm glad. Hi, Mary. Thanks. For, I'm glad to hear me clear. By the way, it's Facebook Live. I'll tell you about that in a moment, too. Um, for over two years now, I've done these talks called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart, although the topics do sometimes have a neutral or masculine or feminine spin on the conversation. So this one is kind of one of those um, non-gender specific topic, but it does apply to both. Yeah. So um, I do these talks every day now for over two years called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Feminine Heart. And today we're at episode number 733. <clears throat> and some of these topics are reiterations and shifts from what I've done before, but it's definitely one I'm talking about now. So the topic today again is when is enough enough? And when are you gonna stop doing the same thing? Now, this has many different layers before I get too far into this. I'm speaking particularly about relationships, although this could be very applicable to a job you hate. It could be applicable to a place you live in that you don't like living in. It could be um, dealing with a car that you need to get repaired. I mean, this, this conversation is not just about romantic relationships, although I'm gonna to stick to that primarily, but it does apply to almost any area in your life where you're basically fed up with what's happening, but you're not changing. And that's the core of all of this, by the way, which I'll get to in a moment. And by the way, again, um, this is a Facebook Live I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. I do have replays on my business page and on YouTube, and I'll tell you about that at the back end in case you're not sure where you, find me, where you found me or where you want to find me when you catch me live. Okay, that's all the logistics out of the way. So to the topic. So the enough piece is really that point where you've had your fill of something where it's no longer working. If something's really good, you won't want to change. So this is not about that. Because frankly, if things are going really well, there's never going to be enough. <laughs> so it won't be enough an issue. But when things aren't working, when you're having challenges, maybe you're making bad choices in your dating life, maybe you're in an intolerable relationship where you're being hurt, abused, or otherwise upset. Maybe you're in a relationship where there's no juice anymore. The same question applies to all of those areas. Is if you're still putting up with something for some other reason than really for your own support. The question is why? Now, one caveat got dropped right in there. If you are in a relationship that's been long term and you have family, you have kids and everything else, that's a different level of qualification of just saying, no, I'm gonna walk away or change. Although this piece, hang on, I've got something in there about this one too, I'll come back to that. So the second part of the, the title was, um, when are you stop doing the same thing or doing, doing the same thing over and over again? Because this is one of those quandaries we get into. We get so, habitual in our relationship choices. Let me qualify that. <laughs> we get so habitual in how we do our relationships, not choosing relationship, but the relationship we're in, we get to habitual in our patterns in that relationship. And when things aren't working out, the first thing we can do is change ourselves. That's the easiest thing to do, by the way, too. So if you're do, fed up doing, the, if you're, excuse me, try that again. I put, I, put, I put the words in the wrong order, it weren't coming out. When you're clear that enough is enough, about something in the relationship. Maybe you and your partner have horrible communication skills for some reason. It's gotten, it's degenerated to a place where it just grunts and groans, literally. You're not even having articulate conversation. It used to be, I love you, I care about you and everything else. Now it's like, oh, mm -hmm, that sort of stuff. So perhaps your relationship, your relationship has degenerated to that and you haven't been changing it. And if in, when you get to the point where enough is enough and that you're done with that, maybe you'll say, honey, let's have a real conversation. And that could be the shift that it takes. So this is not about necessarily dramatic, um, transformational, paradigm-shifting, life up, um, what's we're looking for, not upsetting, um, upheaving, up, up upheaval, up, yeah, one of those. It may not be that requirement, but the truth is you can have a change of direction, you can do something different, you can have a shift by changing something that's been habitual by saying something different, saying, doing something different, asking for something different. So in relationship, that's useful too. So. Back to what I said earlier about if you have kids as a higher level of qualification, if you're having some things that aren't working, you can make some changes in the relationship so maybe it does work and you can save everything. I'm not saying it always works that way because I know quite a few people, 
a lot of people who had divorces and have had to deal with custody of the children. I was in a lot of people who were children of custody in relationship and divorced uh, parents. So I'm not saying it's an answer to that, but it can be a point before you go down that road too far because the thing is, for some people in relationship, enough is enough when they get to the divorce point. They didn't call it before that because the thing about this is, is you don't have to wait till it's nowhere else to go. You can stop before you get there and say, let's try something different. Maybe if you're in a relationship, parent, uh, cu- uh, if you're in a couple in a relationship, you go see a marriage counselor or a therapist, or you go to some sort of group where you get to learn some new skills and trainings and seminars where you get to learn to be a better person and then you contribute better to the relationship. There's all sorts of things you can choose to do differently that will change the paradigm so you won't end up down the bottom of that pit that you're falling into. Just seems any else on that one. That's the, that's the relationship conversation. Now for the single people. For some people, they, and I've dealt with this, quite a few people this way, I've had the experience myself too, when it's like feeling so fed up because it's like I've been going to all these different places all these times and nothing's ever happening, nothing's ever changing and I'm not finding what I want. And I've been there myself and I know quite a few of my friends who've, who've basically said, you know, I'm done with, like, they said I'm done with men or I'm done with women, whatever it is, depending on your preference. Because it's like you're fed up because it's never going to work out and it's, it's like again and again, nothing's changing, it ain't working. Here's the thing. There's one thing that can always be changed and that's your own attitude. And that can also influ- influence, yeah, influence and impact your choices you make in other areas too by what you do, where you go, how you dress, what you bring to the party, how you, how you go out and mingle, and all those different things. But the choice point is in yourself, is yourself. It's nothing to do with anybody else. You get to choose and change your own experience of being in, in the world. You can, if you've been walking around basically in your dating arena and you've basically been a low energy participant when you go on dates and you're not being very involved, maybe you want to change that. Because if you're not getting what you want out of, out of the dating scene, or maybe you're only going on the dating apps, you're not getting out in the world. The dating apps can be helpful to a degree, but truthfully, until you go out in the world, it ain't going to mean much. For many men in particular, there's a tendency to stick to just messaging, texting, and um, just typing responses, whereas a phone call could be a huge difference. So some of the men out there who aren't getting a lot of results in their dating life, and women do, the, women do this too, but not as much, Maybe it's time you said, you know, what's your number? I'll call you instead. Because a phone call is a huge difference from just texting. That's true in every area, by the way. So women, men, that's an up level you can do in your dating life if you're just on the dating apps and, and messaging apps and just t- typing without doing anything about it. Get your butt in gear. Make a phone call. Get together. Do things that actually cause an interaction. It's amazing when you do that. So what I'm getting at, and I think you think getting my message very clearly is, If you're feeling this place of where you're going, enough is enough, then it's time for a change. But again, when you get to that point of enough is enough, sometimes it's irreversible. You can't change anything in terms of a relationship maybe completely um, um, finished at that point. It may may be futile at this point. So first of all, watch for the warning signs and I'll get to that in a minute. So let me back up a second first to the the differences you can make. So talk about relationship, talk about singles, I'm talking about people in general now because this is kind of like a bigger conversation because as I said at the beginning, this enough in, is enough. could be dealing with a job that you don't like. It could be dealing with a place you live in that sucks. Maybe talking about your car that needs a service and you've been putting off for three months. There's lots of places in life where we tend to go, oh, I'll take care of it later. This is the bad habit we have in this culture, maybe. I know it's just this culture. Where it's like, we know we need to take care of something, but we don't want to doing it. Whether it is car maintenance, whether it is a job choice or a place of living or a relationship. When we are willing, and the key thing is willing, to be awake and aware about what's happening in our lives, and it's a big order for some people, then we catch these things earlier. For example, with the car. I did this in, my, I did this in one of my cars. I won't do that again, though. I saw the engine, engine light come on to do something about it. I could have, could have, taken it to a service station and got it checked right away. Or... I could have got taken to a place where I get diagnostics and see what the problem was and fix it myself. Or I could have, actually, no, those are probably the two main choices. But what I didn't do, or what I did do instead, was not bother. And then what happened was the car was making some bad noises. Then I took it in for service. And I suspect that I spent more money because of that than if I'd done it earlier. So like the engine light that comes on in the car, we get warning signs in every area of life. Yes, we do. So 
the idea of having an indicator, a signal, a signpost to let us know that we're going to be off track if we keep going down that path, like car not getting serviced and then requiring an engine rebuild or transmission rebuild or something else, the same thing is true in every area. When you're in a job that isn't working, you know it's not working. But do you wait to the point where you're going to get so upset that you yell at the boss and storm out and get fired? Or do you want to have a conversation earlier than that because you know what's coming, you can feel it? to say, well, let's choose a different course, let me change directions, let me see if I can get a better result, rather than just being upset and blown up and re-upset um, and really blowing up and leaving in a bad place because then everyone judged me harshly. You have the choices. There are signposts, there are indicators, there are messages, there are signals all the way along. But for most of us, we tend to ignore them. So again, in relationship, I said earlier about the, the, the divorce with the kids. If you're in a relationship that's not working, you know very early on the things aren't going the way you want. You might start falling asleep and getting assumptive, maybe getting com comfortable with the lack of um, joy and celebration, but you'll notice along the point going, hang on, I've lost my juice, something's not working here. As I said before, be willing to have a conversation. If you're willing to notice the signpost, like, you know, danger ahead, <laughs> this relationship's gonna fail, you can stop there before you go down that far road too far and say, whoa, whoa, hang a second. Can we have a conversation? Can we see if we can save our relationship? Maybe we can save this marriage. Maybe we can actually have a healthy relationship. If not, maybe we can for figure out our differences in a way that we can leave in a loving way versus just getting to a place where we hate each other so much that we have to fight over the kids because that's what some people do. So every single area, relationship, housing, car, job, money, everything can be, no, let me rewind that a second. We'll give you feedback and at some point in time you'll either notice the feedback and or until the feedback is so big it's going to smack you in the face. I did a Facebook live last week and the beginning of last week about pain as a messenger. This is a similar idea because the truth about life is it's extremely supportive in giving us feedback. You just got to be aware. Signposts, indicators, messages, signals are abundant around us question is are you willing to look for them and be aware of them so in your relationships in your business in your financial dealings in all the different areas those are all indicators whether you're not on track or are on track and the truth is you don't have to get to the enough is enough like I'm done you can actually get to the point where you can look at things from a place of possibilities and go I can see a, a fork in the road here if I go this way I'm gonna be down the pit and it's gonna be it's gonna suck it's gonna be horrible but if I go this way that's where things can work so, hi Mary, I uh, was saying, what, what about when it's over and you keep taking them back? Well, the point is if it's over, you can't take them back. If you're taking them back, it ain't over. I mean, to put it that way around. This is, this is I mean, there's context for this because it, it could be something where you have unfinished business or it could be the simple fact that there's too much good that you keep throwing them away. Like you push them away, but they, then there's so much good you wanna have them back. Then again, one possibility can be that you don't feel you can do better, in which case that's a self-reflective conversation to have. So there's lots of um, caveats on that, but the truth is, if it's over, you won't take them back. The truth is, if you keep coming back to them or you keep coming back to you, you have incomplete business. So find out what that is. Maybe it's, maybe it's a time we need to come have a conversation to completely sever and complete it in a healthy way. Or maybe it's time to figure out what's in the way so you can actually have it work properly, because it can go either way. So I'm not, I'm not saying there's only one way for this one. There's definitely multiple ways. Um, so my point, again, emphatically is notice the signposts, the feedback, the guidance. The universe continually gives us feedback, always. And if we don't listen to it, things don't work. A quick um, example to use. Um, this is something I remember from a seminar years and years ago. Um, we talked about how feedback is interesting. For example, The, the statistics are something around with, with a jet plane flying from like LA to New York that the plane is off course over 94% of the time because the plane is not flying the straight line directly because of winds and, and, and air pockets and everything else. The plane's always course correcting. So it's going off course and it's going back on course. It's going off course, it's going back on course. That's part of feedback. Now that's over a journey, but just like that, we have that support system too. You know when you get feedback, you'll get a feeling, an intuition or a, or a hit about something or you'll get stuck at a traffic light when you're trying to get somewhere and you can't get there because that may be actually a good sign. Maybe something cuts you up on the freeway 
because if you had kept going at the same speed, you would have been in a car accident. There's always subtle signs, so you've got to be open to them. And sometimes you may think that you're, their things are going wrong and you're judging them. Like that person cutting you up, you might be cursing at them, judging them. What if that person who cut you up on the freeway had to get to hospital because they're running late for a surgery, like they're the doctor, or that their action of cutting you up slowed you down enough that you missed an accident? Would you be so judgmental then? So signals and signposts in every area of life, not just in tra on freeways, can be beneficial, but a lot of times we judge them as something's wrong. I mentioned before about the car um, engine light being on. That I judge thinking there's something wrong. It's like, no, I don't want to deal with that. Rather than saying, oh, that's a signal, that's an indicator. I need to do something about it.